Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. How are you guys doing today? How are you doing? You know, there's not many politicians that I will say usually come across what I would think of as being well-spoken and very intelligent. And I just, I don't really feel so much of the partisanship and agenda uh, with Rand Paul and also with his father, Ron Paul, who had previously run for president. Yeah, listening to him talk to uh, Dr. Sicklemaker, you remember we talked about that before, what that last name, F-A-U-C-H, or C-A-C-I, no, no H, right? Right. Yeah. What it really means is he who makes sickles. Isn't that interesting? Very curious. But if you listen to him and his many arguments or grilling the sickle maker, uh, I thought pretty impressive. Of course, everybody has their, their own opinions, but just the, the ability to think logically, state things logically, just look at simple facts and figures and also uh, being able to put two and two together and saying it, it, it just seems like there's something wrong here. So you see the headline, Senator Rand Paul, mask mandates and lockdowns from petty tyrants. No, not again. Choose freedom. This other statement is just ginormous from when I read that last night. Resist. They can't arrest us all. They can't keep all your kids home from school. That's that's where we are at right now, guys. You know, we I, um, hadn't heard from our good friend Dave in the UK. And I was going to just state in the message, Dave, phone home, just to make sure you were okay there. Because uh, I had deleted one of my apps that I had talked to him uh, with. And uh, just want to make sure everything was okay. But he was basically saying how it feels. There's a sense of almost like hopelessness uh, that's come up. Like the tide is just too big. You know, fighting against the tide, it's just like the tidal wave. You know, you think you went through the tidal wave, and then there's another wave that you see that's even bigger. And you gasp in as much air as you can, and you swim forward straight into it. That's all you really can do. Hold your breath and hope that you still have a little breath when you pop up at the surface, hopefully, after this next wave. Yeah, <clears throat> we can only do what we can do and to the best of our abilities. That's really where we're at. And just, um, you know, any little thing you can do for yourself, for your freedom, for your ability to choose, this is what we need to do. And, and it might be baby steps. Sometimes we might have a big step sometimes, but um, we just got to do our best right now. Yes. So resist. They can't arrest us all. They can't keep all your kids at home from school. They can't keep every government building closed. Although I've got a long list of ones they should. We don't have to accept the mandates, lockdowns, and harmful policies of the petty tyrants and feckless bureaucrats. We can simply say no, not again. And then he singles out the speaker, NP, you will not arrest or stop me or anyone on my staff from doing our jobs. We all have either had CV uh, or have had the V or have been offered the V. And we will make our own choices. And he goes on to talking about, you know, the PP, P-A-S-S-P-O-R-T, and basically says you could continue your drunk with power reign over the capital is really what's going on here. Drunk with power. Uh, yeah, there's th that, that is, in my humble opinion, and we all have our own opinions, at least, you know, we, we have them. We might not be able to fully speak them anymore. Uh, this, this was a huge statement, and we might not be able to even think them in the future. Remember we were talking about technology that would actually read your, bo your body and know when, you know, you are literally lying because the technology is out there. 
So, you know, if you were questioned in World War II, I mean, if you were questioned by the Gestapo and you stopped and you said Sig Heil and everything, you tried to make it look good, you know, they might look at you and then just wave you on. Okay, go ahead. You can go to the store. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're, they're going to scan you and, and they're, you know, going to make their decision on the scanning, which is not even going to, you know, there's not much you could do about that because they're just going to read what your body's putting out, what your emotions are putting out. We're in a technology era where, uh, you know, you can't hide behind walls. They could see straight through your walls. They could probably even take your temperature through the walls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we've seen a lot of a lot of technologies like that, too. Like this morning, I was just reading, you know, as, as we watch the world change i was reading about new technologies and one of them is magnetic pavement where uh, vehicles that are already um, electric they charge as they drive on this pavement and then of course there's the computer chips that you might need to be able to hook up to the internet yeah you know our whole well you know again people will think this makes the book of revelation uh, be verified, but then who who gave it to us really? You know, again, who really gave us the script in the first place? And you know, unfortunately, we were watching. Somebody sent us a clip of this guy that actually has a YouTube channel, and he was out there with a petition, and he was saying things in a very very blunt negative tone, like everybody that doesn't get this one procedure they should just be dragged off to the gulag mm -hmm. they should be stuck in jail until they or maybe even be sent to work camps right. and people were signing it mm -hmm. people i mean the unfortunately more than half more than half blindly signed it without even thinking right well um it, it was i forgot his first name his last name is dice i'm surprised i can't remember his name was it mark he, mark dice but he he's a huge comedian but he did this out just to show people. And yeah, he was being serious. Yeah, we're just going to drag them off if they're not going to follow the rules here. Just sign right here. And people sign it. You know, he's just making a point. <laughs> yeah. And, and unfortunately, so much of it was the youth mm -hmm. uh, that weren't questioning anything, weren't really thinking. They were just going, yeah, oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. You know, just, just wanting to be in agreement, fist bumping or what have you or just blindly walking along and and they're just thinking about other things, you know, whether it's dinner, lunch, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, what have you. And they just blindly signed this petition uh, that he was actually portraying as a petition to take people that wouldn't get a certain procedure and stick them in jail indefinitely, or even into certain CAMPSs. And unfortunately, it seemed like more than half were doing it. Uh, it was crazy, but this is the world we live in where people really don't even know how. So many people don't know how to even form a true opinion by looking at every aspect and feeling, learning how to feel the vibrations, feel the energies. You know, unfortunately, there's so many used car salesmen out there in places of, and nothing against used car salesmen, uh, in general, but just that whole perception where, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a selling job. It, it, it's all about sales, how to word it, how to twist it, how to manipulate, how to maneuver. You know, we know, you know, there's propaganda wars out there. There's always been propaganda. Joseph Goebbels and and others in the Nazi party when in the Nuremberg trials were saying, well, it's just simply a matter of con conditioning the people and the masses. And uh, that's not very hard. They'll go along with anything. You just got to rile them up. You just got to tell them there's there's an enemy out there. And, you know, state your story, stay with enough con conviction, you know, pay off a few people to come over to the side and just say, yeah, yeah, you know, out there in the in the public, out there in the in the crowds, and before you know it, everybody's going to be saying, "Yeah, yeah," and this is how it worked for uh, getting people to go along with things, you know, like burning the witches again, or killing a hundred million Native Indigenous Americans. Do you know that there were 
cities in the Americas. And yes, there was there was always warfare between tribes and things like that. That's gone on all over the whole planet. But there were cities in the Americas when the conquistadors came here that had 300,000 people living. You know, cities as big as, say, modern-day uh, Charleston, South Carolina, where people were getting along well, they weren't all running around in loincloths with spears and bows and arrows. No, they were civilized. They just chose to live in harmony with the earth. They had a different system, one that was in balance and harmony with the earth, one that was not raping, robbing, and pillaging the ecology of the planet. They understood. They had a strong understanding that they were a part of the planet and the planet wasn't to be abused. And, you know, there's always... There's always these ministers of propaganda that come along with perfect plans in order to frame things in such a way that you can get the masses to go along with it. And here we see Governor DeSantis blasts Biden, vows Florida won't be a biomedical security state. You know, and and this is what we had talked about, did JB just declare war on Texas and Florida? In, in so many words, yes, get out of the way. If the governors aren't going to participate, then they should get out of the way. So he thinks they should step down from the states that they were elected to. And we didn't use the yes, you know, in that case anyway. But really, we don't really even know in any case you know, what truly when, when you look at how things work. You can't trust anything. You can't trust any politicians. None. What politician could you possibly trust? None. Especially if their lips are moving. Yes. Yes. And this is from Tucker. Rochelle Walensky now makes the laws and she's taking your private property. If you try to make someone pay to live on your property, you're committing a federal crime. And, you know, this went over the top of so many people's heads. Because it was the CDC, the leadership of the CDC, that decided to extend that moratorium on rents. And there is a bigger picture here, a much bigger picture. And so Tucker gets into uh, talking all about Congress, the Constitution, who really makes the laws. And the, the leader of the CDC announced that she has decided to nationalize America's rental properties, millions and millions of them from Maine to California. Tenants no longer required to pay rent. And property owners cannot evict them under any circumstances. Right? This is big, big statements, but think about the bigger picture again. What's been going on? What else have we seen out there? that maybe this ties into in a bigger picture. Remember we were talking about BlackRock buying up homes like there's no tomorrow? Yeah, think about that. Think about that. Home ownership has long been considered an important tool for building financial security and wealth, but it's becoming more difficult for Americans to achieve. Younger generations are less likely to own a home than those from older generations. Millennials' home ownership rate is 8% lower than that of Generation X and baby boomers at the same age. If the rate had remained steady, about 3.4 million more people would own homes in the U.S. today, but instead, young adults are increasingly choosing to either rent or live with their parents. And there's a reason why. So, you know, we're spending more money on rent. Like, just to give you, for instance, our mortgage, which we took on, is about, I would say, it's it's less than one-third what we would pay for rent for the same property. Less than one-third the cost. That's huge. You know, so rent is very expensive proportionate to if you can secure a mortgage on the same property. Now, it depends on where you are. And, you know, we had seen people paying 20 to 50% over asking price in some places. Well, BlackRock is buying up houses in mass. They're snapping this up. Why? Because you're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy about it. It's the bigger picture here. It's all about rental. This, This group and others 
are snapping up housing to rent it back to you. And then you got to ask yourself, who is this group that has assets worth $5.7 trillion? Who is this group? Well, who controls almost all big P-H-A-R-M-A and big media? You'll never guess, or maybe you did. BlackRock and the Vanguard Group, the two largest asset management firms in the world. Combined, they own the New York Times and many other as you see these in there, Berkshire Hathaway, right? J.P. Morgan Chase, you see all these. And then you got to wonder and go into who's got big investments in this group. And I just started to look into uh, Rochelle there, you know, the CDC leadership. And I didn't find anything yet, but, you know, it'd be interesting to see uh, her and her husband are a power couple making a ton of money. Very curious. You know, you got to wonder when we look at who owns what, who has what shares of stock. And I'm sure some of you guys could, could dig into that better than I could. It's all tying together. This is, this is a massive consolidation underway. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the biggest consolidation we've ever seen in our times. But basically, yeah, it's a feudal society. It's the ladies and the lords and everybody else is a serf. It's, it's true. I mean, this is what we're coming to. So times don't really change. They just sort of morph. <laughs> they morph into something a little bit different, but still the same. So again, looking back on our history, we can learn a whole lot about what's going on now. Most definitely. Yeah, a much bigger picture underway. And just to check up on some other things, we see Israel's ready to strike Iran, says Defense Minister, amid simmering tensions with enduring foe. They say Iran is just a matter of months away from having a uh, NUKE uh, capability, let's just say. And, you know, that is obviously spiraling out of control. The United States hypersonic ARRW failed its test, but at least it left the B-52 bomber, which we saw one of those flying overhead yesterday, very low. And so it's it's like if you look at what they're saying, all the hypersonic tests uh, have been lackluster or total failures on the U.S. side. Meanwhile, Russia and China already have the technology. And this is a sign of the times we're in. This is a woman in San Francisco leaning out of the car with her AK. Yeah, the police did find the car, and there's an investigation underway. This, this is the times what we're going into. It's just crazy mm -hmm. what we're seeing out there. Coinbase CEO warns of sweeping surveillance of crypto holders and infrastructure bill. And this, this $550, $50 billion bill, primarily about roads and bridges, but it could also... Well, in the language that was there before they have done a, um, as we look and go down, as we see some senators uh, went and basically did an amendment to it, and we'll see what gets passed. Uh, but it was basically, it wasn't going to make even just brokers and you know because again you got to define who's a broker etc you know how much crypto do you have do you qualify as being a broker and then having to pay uh, taxes and everything but um the amendment there would make it so that only the big corporations uh such as coinbase would have to pay you know their share of taxes and treat things like you would treat other uh, investments but the, the, the main jive is here, things get tucked into bills that have nothing to do with the bills all the time. And this is how so many of our rights have gone away. This is how so many backdoor provisions have gotten in there. Things such as in case of an emergency, you know, your land can be seized. You can actually be put into a work camp in case of a national emergency. Yeah, most people don't realize that. 
as well as you know basically losing our ability to govern ourselves. And you know all this is adding up to many many wealthy people renouncing American citizenship. You know the 2020 was a record year and uh, just leaving. Those are people with assets over $2 million who could get out, more than ever are getting out, and, and they're heading for the hills. But then we saw um, our friend Joe had sent us some video, and I wasn't able to verify it or didn't have a chance to look and verify it yet, just mentioning it off the cuff uh, of supposedly uh, clashes going on in Ecuador between the military and the police. And you just never know in a smaller country, too. You might want to escape to somewhere and then all of a sudden, you know, it gets taken over <clears throat> by a military faction. And when I first looked at this, I was like, eh. And then when we played the video, I was like, what the heck? Uh, you know, because if, if it's not CGI, it's super weird. But it doesn't appear to be CGI because you can see the lady. This is in... Uh, while I stop in Goose Creek, South Carolina, Shanika Joyner and her daughter watched this cloud glide across the sky. Is that a ship, her daughter asked on the video? And then all of a sudden, you know, the cloud, it's weird because, and I don't have permission to play this and we never know. There's always so many ways they could take a channel down. Um, it's like the clouds moving fast Un unusually fast and then all of a sudden you know she gets out of the car so that makes it look like it's not cgi mm -hmm. and you see this thing up there and it's just below the clouds moving along and it's just bizarre looking you know it's very weird i'll give you guys the link check it out didn't you think that was just crazy it was that was really an interesting one you know seeing like you could feel this little creature in there knowing he's in a cloaked thing <laughs> cruising along he knows he knows he's cloaked it's great yeah you know and there are so many different ets that are here mm -hmm. it would boggle most people's minds it's not just uh grays and reptilians and pleiadians you know and octurians there's tons of different ones mm -hmm. We would sit in our yard in Nevada, out in the middle of the desert where nobody else was around for quite a while, and we would just watch them. We would watch one ship come out of a portal and then go over towards Area 51. Another ship come out of a portal, head over towards Area 51. And when remote viewing them, Cindy could see, I mean, a lot of them were just real strange little yeah. guys that you can't, you know, she didn't get that they were um benevolent or malevolent towards humans they were more indifferent they were just doing their own thing conducting their own trade mm -hmm. uh, yeah it was really kind of fun to remote view them and get a bigger picture of where we are and and where they're at so that was a lot of fun to experience that yeah very very interesting and very cool but we're not alone we've never been alone and there's all sorts of beings around us all the time so I just put this up there to give you guys like a brief overview, 10 steps you should take after it hits the fan. And, you know, it's just to basically trigger some thoughts. Calm yourself. Just think about it. Because, I mean, we had three uh, power outages in three days. And what if it was the big one? Because we would not be surprised to have a long lasting power outage this month or, or heading into this time period between now and the end of the year. We wouldn't be surprised at all. And in fact, we kind of expect that it's going to happen. Calm yourself. And this is the type of thing to think of, too. Having a plan is so key. You know, have a plan. When it happens, get as much intel as time and media allows. You know, obviously, if you're still able to connect to the Internet, find out what's going on. Do you have the number written down somewhere in case you can't get on the Internet? to your local power, you know, and internet provider, things like that to find out, is this just a local outage? Is this something big? You know, what's going on here? Things like that. Gather your family, friends, loved ones, you know, as much as possible. You know, hopefully you're blessed with an abundance of support. Explain the situation in detail to them. 
assigned tasks and get to work. Like, you know, if, if you are, say, a family of four, you know, husband goes to do one thing, the wife, you know, she knows she's supposed to do something else, the son something else, the daughter something else, you know, just to go about making your plans, have plan B and C in case you have to all of a sudden leave the property. What if you're around the wildfires or something like that? What if there's a big earthquake? Where's plan B? Where do you go? You know, do you go to Uncle Joe's? You know, do you go, do you go to somewhere else? What if there's something that happens in Uncle Joe's is where you were going to go. And then yeah, at the same time, he's affected by something too. Where's, where, where, where's the third choice? Uh, gather local intel, you know, getting out there. I mean, talking to the neighbors and other people. Do you already know them? And how well do you know them? And, uh, you know, gathering information in the community is really important. Reassess, plan, repeat steps seven through nine. So, you know, just, just to give you an idea, I mean, how well prepared are we for when things go crazy? And when we talk about the Hopi prophecy, I just wanted to go over it again um, because many people have talked about it, but maybe they haven't read the whole thing. Um, I just want to touch on it. Uh, so the Hopi prophecy says the end of all Hopi ceremonialism will come when a kachina removes his mask during a dance in the plaza before uninitiated children, which the general public, for a while there will be no more ceremonies, no more faith, then Oribe will rejuvenate with its faith, faith and ceremonies, marking the start of a new cycle of Hopi life. World War III will be started by those peoples who first revealed the light, divine wisdom or intelligence in the other old countries. That would be like India, China, Islamic nations, Africa. The United States will be destroyed, land and people by NUKEs and radioactivity. Only the Hopi and their homeland will be preserved as an oasis to which refugees will flee. You know, that's pretty um, bleak, and we hope we could change the timeline. But when we look at any of these prophecies, I feel the prophecies are out there. Uh, for two reasons, you know, I feel you know part of them are legit, where people are seeing a possible timeline. I feel others are also out there as as a part of the control matrix to get us to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, that's what I felt for a very long time. They're out there to kind of try to harness our energy and and give themselves momentum. Bomb shelters are a fallacy. It's only materialistic people who seek to make shelters. Those who are at peace in their hearts already have the greater shelter of life. There is no shelter for evil. Those who take no part in making of world division by ideology are ready to resume life in another world. Whether they be black, white, red, or yellow, they are all one, brothers. And, you know, this to me is so huge, too, because are we taking part in an ideology of separation? You know, if we believe that we're the only ones that are going to get, quote unquote, saved, or that everybody that doesn't believe what we believe are infidels, or their souls are, you know, damned to eternal torture, are we really spreading love and unity consciousness, or are we spreading division? You know, this is one of the biggest things, and when we run into issues making videos, usually it's it's showing the underlying division that's created through the mainstream religions. And that's what they don't want coming out more than anything, because they know that we're going to figure out, many of us have, that the politicians are not working for us, that the media is totally controlled, bought and paid for, that even the science and the education system is all about indoctrination and conditioning. But when you put in the faith part, when you put in your belief system, that's even more powerful than all those others. You know, that's something that hits us to the core. That's our, our, our Linus blanket that we can't let go of, our binky that we won't let go of as little kids. And it's not that we don't need to, we, that we definitely need to let go of it. If your binky, if your blanket, your security blanket, is simply that at the core of things, there's a unity and that we need to basically just simply be spreading love and compassion, not thinking that we have to convert anybody else to our system of belief uh, and recognizing when we are truly being divisive. And I had shared with you too, it hit me like a ton of bricks when my um, 
my Sunday school slash, uh, you know, Bible um, class teacher. This is going way back, like 40 something years. You know, was was basically saying during these times that we are now getting into, you know, he said, well, us believers, we're not going to have to suffer. We're going to be up in the clouds. You know, we're going to be there with Jesus in the clouds. We're going to be watching it all happen. And I said to him, what do you, how are you going to feel when you're watching this all happen? He said, I'm going to be like, go get them, God, punish them, torture them. And I'm thinking, wow, I am shocked to see that you are showing such a, a lack of compassion for others. And, you know, thinking that you're a Christian, but are you really a Christian? Because if you're following the, the teachings of Yeshua, they're not necessarily what we have in mainstream practice today. Because the true teachings of Yeshua are, are all about love and compassion. And then again, everything has been distorted because, again, who controls this world? Who controls the media? Who controls the education system? Well, it's Satan, right? It's the adversary. It's, we're even told that. So then why would you believe what the adversary gives you? Especially when these secret societies control everything. And as we talked about with the King James Bible being, uh, you know, basically brought into existence by King James, who is the head of all the Masonic lodges. This is a tool. You have Pope Leo saying the myth of Christ has served us well. A statement made by Pope Leo, which they tried to dispute now, but which was down in writing as well. And it doesn't mean that Yeshua never existed. Of course he did. He was a teacher of righteousness. The Essene community was waiting for a teacher of righteousness to come and basically bring back balance and harmony. And we see all these types of things being echoed in movies, obviously, as well, and storylines. The Essenes lived out of society because they viewed and knew that the modern-day society of their times, ruled by the Roman Empire in their area, was the beast system. It still is the beast system. We still have the beast system. It's never changed. It's, it's just morphed. So, again, it's only materialistic people who seek to make shelters because we go on forever. We're consciousness. Consciousness is eternal. And we're going to touch on that in an upcoming video. Uh, fascinating, fabulous stuff about the fractal nature of the universe and consciousness itself and how uh, we are way more than we think we are. We are way more than we think we are. You have, most people have no clue of how expansive and how great they really are. Well, unless you're just listening to this this video, then you guys do have a little bit of a clue. So that's good. We can help fill in your fill in the blanks for you a little bit. So those who are at peace in their heart already have shelter. They already have shelter, but there's no shelter for evil, you know. So again, what they're talking about is, you know, you can gain the whole world. You could you could be a top level politician, you know, have black eyes as well because you're being overshadowed by these dark entities. What good does it do you? Uh, there's there's a term that's used in the Kabbalah called the Klippoth, Klippoth, and it basically means shells or husks. And it's referring to, the, again, what happens with these arconic forces. It's fascinating to look at. It goes perfectly in line with the prophecies of Peter Dunov as well. So there will be a spiritual conflict with material matters. Material matters will be destroyed by spiritual beings who remain to create one world and one nation under one power, that of the creator. That time is not far off. It will come when the blue star Kachina dances in the plaza and removes his mask. He represents a blue star far off and yet invisible, which will make its appearance soon. And so the time is foretold by a song sung during the Wu Wu Chim ceremony. It was sung in 1914 before the Great World War, number one, and then in 1940 before World War II. 
describing the disunity, corruption, and hatred for contaminating Hopi rituals, which were followed by the same evils spreading all over the world. Same song was sung in 1961 during the Wawuchim ceremony. The emergence to the fifth world has begun. It's being made by the humble people of little nations, tribes, and racial minorities. You can read this in the earth itself. Plant forms from previous worlds are beginning to spring up as seeds. This could start a new study of botany if people are wise enough to, to read them. The same kinds of seeds are being planted in the sky as stars. The same kinds of seeds are being planted in our hearts. All these are the same depending on how you look at them, which makes the emergence to the next fifth world. These comprise nine most important principles of the Hopi, connected with the creation of the nine worlds and nine previous worlds on which we live. The present fourth world, the three future worlds, which we have yet to experience in the world of Teo Ioa, the creator, and its nephew, Sotukan Nang. The Hopi and others who were saved from the great flood. So there you have a great flood story, just like Noah and the Hopi were saved from the great flood, just like Noah, just like Anishim before Noah, as, as the biblical stories again come from the 1200 to 2000 year older Sumerian stories, as, as we had talked about. And so, I mean, just look at, you know, the wording again, the Hopi and others who were saved from the great flood made a sacred covenant with the great spirit, never to turn away from him. He made a set of sacred stone tablets called the Tiponi, sacred stone tablets, Moses, the 12 commandments, you know, there, there's a reflection again. And many, you know, people might go and say, well, this is just a copy of a biblical prophecy and et cetera, et cetera. It, because they want the Bible to be perfectly right, because that's that's again their their safety blanket that they cling to, and you know it's understandable because that's what you're brought up with, and, and we're conditioned into a certain language, and it gets hard to break that language. But what's talked about here is the fact that there's to be unity from all groups. What's what's going to come is there's going to be survivors from all different races all different creeds, all different nationalities, and we're no longer going to need the dogma. We'll recognize the dogma for what it was. It was a means of separation and control, and, and that is the big thing. But what it gets into, too, is, is um, you know, some descriptions of the times and what to see with the great uh, purification, the time of the great purification, which it does feel like we're stepping into that uh, time of the great purification and everything from, you know, a description of our train system, our plane system, chemtrails in the sky, you know it. I mean, it's it's all explained out there, and then it also talks about how World War Three will be started again, and and China is right there at the forefront. When the war comes, the United States will be destroyed by gourds of ashes that will fall to the ground, boiling the rivers, burning the earth where no grass will grow for many years and causing a disease that no medicine can cure. Sounds like radiation sickness, does it not? Again, you know, clear, clear descriptions. And we see all this happening. We were looking at that technology with the hypersonic rockets. And the fact that they're telegraphing that, that China and Russia have this technology and, and it moves so fast that you couldn't respond. And there again, that it seems to be failing with the U.S. And, you know, for sure, we have, uh, and both sides, all sides, you know, have weaponry that they're not going to show. They might not ever show it during the entirety of the war because, again, the real power brokers, the real controllers, are controlling all the sides because they are controlling the entire situation on the planet. Absolutely. That's very, very important. That's their whole key is they have to control everything but make the illusion that things are separate at the same time. And they do it very, very well. And they don't want us to figure that out because once we figure it out, well, the game's up. Then we start, we're able to take control of ourselves. We're able to take control of our of our own actions and we know what we need to do to prepare to stay out of the grips of them so you know there is the uh white pahana uh who was a, a teacher and thought to be almost like a deity and we had talked about how the fact that yeshua uh did come over to the americas 
when he was here on the planet physically, and he did. He made appearances throughout the Americas because, again, as Sri Yukateswar manifested a physical body that was the teacher of Yogananda, uh, he manufactured a physical body, as, as yogis can do. Some yogis and some monks can do these amazing things because they're at such a higher level, and they really understand how the universe works. And they've achieved things through their meditative practices and their yoga uh, where they can do things like this. And then some are also just simply gifted from past life experience and what they've achieved in past life that they can do miracles while here with us. So when Yogananda's teacher was about to pass on, Yogananda was 100 miles away in a different town and he manifested physically where he could actually touch him and let him know he was about to pass. And so Yogananda came back to say goodbye to him. And so Yeshua, again, being an extremely advanced being, and what we get is that he was a combination of Pleiadian, Octurian, and human uh, all together, you know, Homo sapiens all together, uh, and a, his body an experiment of sorts to try to bring into effect a perfect example of what we can become and what we can do. And again, he said, greater things you will do. That's the clue right there. He also said the kingdom of heaven is inside you right now. You just have to cultivate it. Well, they're waiting for the return of White Pahana, which sounds an awful lot like waiting for the return of Yeshua or somebody like Yeshua. Uh, perhaps you know, other Pleiadians, other members of the Galactic Federation, when we look to Mother Shipton's prophecy and, and when everything is all said and done and, you know, the dragon's tail has made its way and done its destruction and then the earth is going to begin anew with whole continents sinking, all new continents rising, what happens? There's a silver ship that comes from the sky and strange beings come out of it and they teach humanity how to live in harmony with the earth and the secrets of how the universe truly works. So again, these are the, the great and shining ones of legends that are in legends all around the globe. When we look to the book of Enoch and the watchers and the, the quote unquote fallen ones uh, that led mankind astray by teaching them all the secrets, how to grow foods and things. But then also they put that twist in there, how women to make their eyes look pretty with certain dyes and things and um, they twist it in a certain way now I was a big proponent of the book of Enoch for a long time as a kid growing up and then something hit me and it hit me that this feels like it's actually in inverse what they're doing is they're they're trying to make out the good benevolent ones from past generations that were here were helping to guide people out to be the bad guys because again you know where where does the power grid come from that is here on the planet right now it comes out of the sumerian tradition that's the area the land of the gods of sumer this is the land where the anunnaki and the Gigi roam and of course the Gigi are here they're still here their ancestors are here and some of them you know some of their offspring so to speak bloodlines we see we, we we look at day in and day out they're out there on the public stage again look to certain families like the roths childs and and you're looking at certain lineages that stem from the egg and what happened was all the benevolent ones again we we're, were talking back to lemurian in new times and farther back we were in 5d we make this transition falling into 4d it has to do with the procession of the equinoxes it has to do with the nasty area that we are literally in in space for a certain period of time that the earth and the sun our solar system travel through which allows us uh, to fall because again man it's himself in the golden age is like the angels with merkabas merkabas are your wings angels have wings because angels have merkabas and 
certain humans even today on Earth have fully developed Merkabas or close to fully developed Merkabas. That is the angel's wings. And it, it's really, really interesting and curious how we're brought up believing certain things and then we find out other things. Ultimately, what I do is when I have a book placed in front of me, I always have to keep in mind, where did this come from? <laughs> Who wrote this and who's who's trying to teach this? And then you just discern, you discern and you decipher and you sift and you find out what is true using your heart. Yes. So again, if anything beyond just cultivating the love and the compassion that leads to the beginnings of a unity consciousness, any sort of dogmatic beliefs, those are just things that are going to divide us and be part of the problem and not the solution. Uh, it's pretty simple. It really, really is pretty simple. So there's different signs that they were given. We're told of the coming of white-skinned men like Pahana, but not living like Pahana. Men who took the land that, that was not theirs, and men who struck their enemies with thunder. So you could see the idea of, of guns, muskets. You can see the idea of conquistadors, and then you know the English coming over, the French as well taking the land. Again, there were hundreds of millions of indigenous people in the Americas, and yet we were told Columbus discovered the Americas. You know, that's just an atrocity in and of itself. And they were living in harmony, much more in harmony with the land uh, than what we have now. Our lands will see the coming of spinning wheels filled with voices. In his youth, my father saw this prophecy come true with his eyes. White men bringing their families and wagons across the prairies. Third sign, strange beasts like a buffalo with long great horns will overrun the land large numbers. These white feathers saw with his eyes the coming of white men's cattle. Fourth sign, the land will be crossed by snakes of iron. Fifth, the land will be crisscrossed by a giant spider web. You know, think about the internet, think about telegraph, think about, you know, telephone poles. The land will be crisscrossed with rivers of stone that make pictures in the sun. You will hear of the sea turning black, many living things dying because of it. You will see many youth who wear their hair long, like my people, come and join tribal nations to learn their ways and wisdom. And you will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens above the earth that will fall a great crash. It will appear as a blue star. Very soon after this, the ceremonies of my people will cease. So those are the signs that the great destruction is coming. And, you know, some think that that is a space station, which is having issues right now as well. And uh, again, the Hopi land, which we've been by, is uh, over in northeastern uh, Arizona. And right below the Hopi land, is an area that I feel strongly was part of uh, horrible destruction from the sky. Others have felt it as well. There's a giant crater over in that area. It feels like that was part of some massive, massive atrocious war of the gods in the past. Yeah, it felt pretty awful. It's, it did. So near Oribi, Oribi, I should say, Arizona, there's a petroglyph known as Prophecy Rock which symbolizes many Hopi prophecies. And you can see there the symbolism and the two paths as well. Large figure on the left, great spirit, the bow in his left hand represents instructions to Hopi to lay down their weapons. The vertical line to the right of the great spirit is the time and skill of thousands of years. The point at which the great spirit touches the lines, time of his return. The life path established by the Great Spirit divides into the lower, narrow path of continuous life in harmony with nature and the wide upper road of white man's scientific achievements. The bar between the paths above the cross is the coming of the white men. The cross is that of Christianity. The circle below the cross represents the continuous path of life, small human figures, and the upper road represent on one level the past three worlds and the present. On another level, the figures indicate some that some of the Hopi will travel the white man's path, having, having been seduced by its glamour. Two circles on the lower path of life are the great shaking of the earth, World Wars One and Two, the swastika in the sun, and the Celtic cross represent the two helpers of Pahana, the true white brother. 
the short line that returns to the straight path of life is the last chance for people to turn back to nature before the upper road disintegrates and dissipates. The small circle above the path of life at the, after the last chance is the great purification, after which corn will grow in abundance again when the great spirit returns and the path of life continues forever. And so, you know, we, we do have a choice too as far as which path are we going to take. And again, we have to return back to the land in so many ways. We have to uh, rediscover and embrace the divine feminine, which has gotten away from us in this whole system. Oh, boy, has it ever. <laughs> it has. So hopefully you guys found this interesting. Again, be prepared as much as possible. And, you know, it, it really is pretty damn simple as long as we're cultivating peace, love, compassion, brotherhood, you know, any difference between skin color doesn't mean a damn thing when these are just basically vehicles that we are inhabiting for this 3D experience. And it's amazing how the minutia of the world can separate us so much. We have to rediscover the underlying unity that lies behind all of creation. Which is a beautiful thing, but it can be painful getting there. It can. So we want to thank all of our family members that are patrons. We couldn't do it without you guys. And also thank everybody that's been checking out and trying medicinal food. And good to see all the feedback, the positive feedback. It does support the channel as well when you do order for medicinal foods. There's a link at every video up at the top of the page. As always, guys, God bless and namaste. Namaste.